the top 10 combinations in college football, specifically quarterbacks and wide receivers. Important to note, these are projections. These are not current rankings. So on this list, I have quarterbacks that haven't yet started a full season for their football team. So it makes no sense for me to have them as the top combo right now in college football without having any real game experience under their belt. But I'm telling you, by the time we get to December, I think this list is going to be accurate. So let's start out at number 10. And number 10 might be a little bit of an eyebrow raiser. That's all right. At number 10, I got Carson Beck to Dominique Levitt lighting up the scoreboard this year in Athens, Georgia. Now, you see that name, Carson Beck. You see him in the 10 spot. You're like, wait a second, J.D., uh, didn't you have him as the number one quarterback in college football projection-wise on your top 10 QBs? Absolutely did. Phenomenal memory. The reason why I have him at 10 is because when you pair him with Dominique Lovett, I think that they're going to have a lot of mouths to feed. Like, I think Dominique Lovett is going to be the go-to guy. I think he will be wide receiver 1A. However... I think there's going to be several uh, wide receiver 1Bs, whether it be Colby Young, whether it be uh, London Humphreys, whether it be Oscar Delp at tight end. Like, there's going to be people to throw the football to here for Georgia. Also, we're not accounting for what they're going to do in the backfield. So, statistically, they may not light it up quite as much as some other guys on this list. But Carson Beck, Dominic Lovett, both going into year two of starting experience out there at Georgia, they're going to run it up. If you watch that spring game, I saw Dominique Lovett do like a circus Cirque du Soleil catch on somebody's back and bring it in and hit the fence. It looked painful. Uh, that's just a sneak peek, a preview, if you will, of what they're going to do in 2024. So Beck to Lovett, book it, one of the top 10 duos in college football at the end of the 2024 season. This next one, this logo is no stranger to any quarterback or wide receiver power rankings list. Will Howard to Emeka Egbuka, baby. Running in at number nine, Emeka Ibuka is the alpha in that wide receiver room. Jeremiah Smith has got to get his. Who's to say he's not an alpha for a long time out there in Columbus? He might be one of the alphas as well, but Emeka Ibuka, for how long he's been at Ohio State and what he's done on the field, the resume, man, men lie, women lie, tape don't lie. Okay, Emeka Ibuka has been a thousand yard receiver. Will Howard has, I think, taken some lumps throughout his career playing college football. He is taking some lumps, I would say, in the, uh, the social media sphere right now as he leads into this season at Ohio State. I said this before on the show. I'll say it again. He's an upgrade. He is. I love Kyle McCord. I hope he dominates at Syracuse. Will Howard is better for you at quarterback, both running the football and throwing the football. Also, we, we have to probably account for this as well. Ohio State, with Chip Kelly running the offense, is, in my opinion, going to be much more dynamic. I think they will be run to throw, which is one reason why I don't have them higher on this list when it comes to Will Howard and Emeka Ibuka as a duo. But they're going to put up big numbers. Like, to be the guy at Ohio State, Emeka Ibuka's waited his turn now. Will Howard, I believe, has, in some respects, I suppose you could say, also waited his turn from a national level, being in the spotlight. But, like, this is the time now. This is the time for them, again, when it comes to other mouths to be fed at Ohio State and the run-to-pass kind of approach, I believe they'll take. That's why I don't have them higher on the list. But nonetheless, going to be a top-10 duo, I believe, in college football in 2024. All right, now at number eight, let's go out to Coral Gables. I got Cam Ward and Xavier Restrepo. Now, Xavier Restrepo does work in the slot. Cam Ward, his first year out there at Miami, being a starting quarterback for the Canes. The reason why I have them at eight is because everybody needs good insurance, right? Car insurance, health insurance, life insurance. Cam Ward, when he is back there and gets some trouble or he doesn't know where to go with the football, he's going to his insurance. And that is Xavier Estrepo. Like a good neighbor, Xavier Estrepo is there. Don't sue us if that's your jingle. Uh, they will, I believe, benefit from the other pieces on that offense. Damian Martinez pounding the rock, kind of keeping those defenses honest. Speaking of keeping defenses honest, Sam Brown, the transfer wide receiver from Houston. If you try and creep up and just play that uh, that more shallow coverage, you're going to be turning around and have six points scored on you. So Xavier Estrepo is going to be, I believe, a monster when it comes to kind of that middle of the field, those intermediate routes. He's going to eat and eat greedy. Ken Ward will find him consistently. Where they will be really, really dangerous for opposing defenses 
is when Cam Ward decides to ad lib, and they're probably working on this right now throughout the course of, well, I guess when they get into fall camp especially, but right now when they do those throwing sessions during the summer, when the play breaks down and Cam Ward breaks contain, his eyes go downfield, and if you're a receiver, you're taught to break off your route, you have different responsibilities within that. But if they can develop that sixth sense where Cam Ward knows, okay, Xavier Strepo is going to this spot of the field because that's what we practiced, that's what he's done during practice, and just sort of have that unspoken connection during the play, it's going to get crazy. They're going to put up big numbers in Coral Gables, and Cam Ward will uh, probably have his fair share of accolades in the postseason he's nominated for. Xavier Estrepo is beloved for a number of reasons out there at Miami. One of the most, um, one of the most, I guess, notable reasons is how consistent he's been and how loyal he's been to Miami. So I think he has major dividends paid for him with Cam Ward at quarterback this upcoming season. At number seven, this is one of those new names. Now we talked about. Haven't seen him play college football really just yet. I guess if you count the bowl game, you could say you saw him play some ball. Nico Iamaliava to Squirrel White. This, to me, don't want to put too much of a label on it. Don't want to give him too lofty of something to aspire to. But this, to me, gives Hendon Hooker to Jalen Hyatt vibes. Because Josh Heupel told us in an interview, Nico Iamaliava is as talented a player as I have coached. I'm imagining that includes someone like a Hendon Hooker. Now, the reason why that offense cooked the way that it did in 2022 is because Jalen Hyatt, if you gave him man-to-man coverage, he was burning you with a smile on his face. He had real deal speed. And the way Josh Heupel's offense operates, they're going to spread you out, match you up one-on-one, receiver win your matchup, quarterback give him a good ball, we're scoring points. They're going to do that a lot this year at Tennessee. Last year didn't have, I don't think, the quantity of guys to do it. No shade of Joe Milton. I don't think they had the quarterback consistency to do it. They're going to have it this year. They're going to put up big numbers. The benefit from the attention defenses have to play to a Brew McCoy, to a Dante Thornton across the board here. Tennessee can make you sweat a little bit more than they could last year. That's going to be one of the best duos in college football. Mark my words. Squirrel White, I've said it before. Been clocked on the catapult technology at over 21 miles an hour, I believe. Y'all, that's speeding in school zones. You've heard me say that before. Big things ahead for uh, Squirrel White and Nico Iamaliava. Now, at number six, I'll stay in the SEC. Garrett Nussmeyer to Kyron Lacey, man. This is like, this is first team, all wait your turn kind of duo. Because Garrett Nussmeyer, he could have gone and played somewhere else last year, y'all. Like, he could have. We saw it in the bowl game. He was ready. He's got the physical skills to do it. Kyron Lacey had a good year last year. The only issue is he was sharing targets in production with two first-round picks in that wide receiver room. And I'm, I'm sure that he was happy for his teammates, but now he steps into this season where it's like, hey, yes, C.J. Daniels is here, but this is supposed to be the Kyron Lacey and Garrett Nussmeyer show in a lot of ways. I wholeheartedly believe that. Good things come to those who wait. If the bowl game is a preview of what they're going to be, Kyron Lacey had six catches for 95 yards with Garrett Nussmeyer playing quarterback. Kyron Lacey puts up, it feels like a highlight play every single fall camp or spring ball or whatever. When it's one-on-one, it's a 50-50 ball, Kyron Lacey is making that catch. Garrett Nussmeyer has proven he is willing to give his guys a chance, sometimes to a fault. I think the reps he's gotten behind closed doors in Baton Rouge will only propel him as he steps into his role as QB1 for LSU. I cannot wait to see them take the field. I cannot wait to see them reap the rewards of having waited their turn in Baton Rouge and uh, do big things in this Joe Sloan offense. At number five, this is one you could put higher on the list, but I'll explain it. Number five, I got Shadur Sanders to Travis Hunter. And make no mistake, this is the fastball. This is the fastball. If Colorado is going to make a bowl game in 2024, and I believe they are more than capable, it will be on the wings of this duo. All right? Travis Hunter getting a lot of buzz for what he's going to be in the NFL. Is he a corner? Is he a receiver? I think he's a receiver. 
And I'm not an NFL scout. I'm just using my eyes here. He had 721 yards and five touchdowns last year. Shadur Sanders, when he wasn't having to scramble for his life, even when he did have to scramble for his life, he was, a, he was really efficient. Really efficient quarterback. If they can protect him a little bit better, and if they can play a little bit more defense to give this offense a little bit more uh, room to work with, if you will, not having the pressure of we've got to score every single time we touch the football, if they can keep defenses off balance, keep them guessing, these two have the connection, have the ability, have the firepower to put up really big numbers. Like th- This is one of those that you watch. We, we do this on this show, too. We'll circle different uh, lines on our lists. Like We did this with Caleb Williams when it was back uh, towards the, the end of his Heisman season. I think this is one of those duos that you put on boom watch. So Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, right now have them at five and projecting towards the end of the season. They could finish a lot higher if Colorado is able to do more around them to uh, allow them to be successful. So that's our top five. Or, or, excuse me, that is uh, 10 through 5. Let's jump into the top 5 now. Uh, at number 4, I got Noah Fafita to Tetaroa McMillan. Now, these two were high school teammates. Noah Fafita didn't really get the, the keys to the offense until late September, early October last year. They're just getting warmed up. They are. T Mac had. 1,400 yards receiving last year for 10 touchdowns, 90 receptions. He is a matchup nightmare. And he had two games with less than five catches. Translation, they're going to try to get him the football. I know it's a new staff. I understand that. No Fafita and the chemistry they built up over the course of their, not just college career, but high school career as well. That's going to be massive. This will be a very, very potent, potent uh, duo in college football in 2024. Make no mistake about it. They're just getting warmed up. Just getting the engine revved up a little bit here. Now into the top three. At number three, I got Dylan Gabriel to Tez Johnson. And we spoke about this a little bit in our Call Your Shot segment. This duo to me is so complimentary in every single facet. From Dylan Gabriel's skill set, getting the ball out quick, to Tez Johnson and what he does getting open quick, separates very well off the line. And then the system itself, which is designed to get the ball to Tez Johnson quickly and make something happen in space and go make a play after the catch, that is what he does to a tee. Last year, did it to the tune of almost 1,200 yards on 86 catches and 10 touchdowns. I know Bo Nix has gone to the league. I understand that. But Dylan Gabriel and his experience factor we've talked about on this show is going to equip him to get the ball to Tez Johnson consistently and allow them to do numbers, I think, like they did last season at Oregon offensively. So at number three, Dylan Gabriel and Tez Johnson will be without question one of the best duos in college football at the end of next season. So now we're down to our final two. And a guy who uh, I think is one of the swaggiest quarterbacks in college football, paired with one of the best players in college football, period. Definitely the best receiver in college football. It's Brady Cook to Luther Burden out there at Missouri. And the big thing with them is this is now going to be the sequel to what they did in 2023. A lot of people will tell you, Nick Brake, movie stand, he'll tell you. A lot of times sequels, they, uh, they fall short of what the original movie was, right? Sometimes the story is not as good. Supporting cast isn't as good. It's going to be the case here at Missouri in terms of what you brought back from last year. Cody Schrader, gone to the league, a lot of production gone from the defense, new D.C. Doesn't mean it's going to be bad, but it does mean there's some question marks there. So what happens then when you don't have as good of a supporting cast? Need those stars to step up. Need my Leonardo DiCaprio to carry the movie. My Matt Damon, carry the movie. Mark Wahlberg, carry the movie. That's what these guys are to me, all right? So last year, 86 receptions for 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns. I would expect them to lean even more heavily on Luther Burden in the past game this upcoming season. They'll be creative with it. They'll find different ways to get him involved. But this duo will be what Missouri leans on as they eye a college football playoff berth in 2024. Make no mistake about it. So, that is 10 through 2. And at number 1 here, we got a transfer wide receiver playing with an experienced quarterback 
and I got Quinn Ewers to Isaiah Bond as my number one projected duo in all of college football. And the big thing with this is here, like, let's not overthink it. I get Isaiah Bond. He's new to the system. I understand that. Let's not overthink this. You have an explosive offense under Steve Sarkeesian that schematically will maximize great athletes. We saw it with Xavier Worthy. We saw it with Adonai Mitchell. Isaiah Bond with how explosive he was last year at Alabama. I don't think leaves any doubt about what he can do with the football in his hands and how he can separate from a secondary. Sark is going to scheme Isaiah Bond open. He's going to give him opportunities to win. You pair that with Quinn Ewers going into his third year in the system, who it feels like really hit the ground running last year and looked like a new version of Quinn Ewers. If he picks up where he left off last year into this year and even builds on that, how good is Texas going to be? For the purpose of this segment, how good is is Isaiah Bond going to be? I told you already, I think he's going to be a 1,000-plus yard wide receiver because there's a lot of production now to be made up. Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, leave right around 2,000 yards receiving on the table. I'm not saying Isaiah Bond is responsible for all of it, but with his skill set, with this offense, with Quinn Ewers at quarterback, Isaiah Bond will do numbers like Goodwill Hunting, and Quinn Ewers will play a major, major part in that, obviously, going into year three now as the quarterback out there in Austin. So, to recap it for you, again, projections, not current rankings. So we're looking to December to give you our top 10 here, but my top 10 combos, no sauce, maybe extra sauce in all of college football. Number 10, Carson Beck to Dom Lovett out there at Georgia. At number nine, out to Columbus, where Will Howard and Emeka Egbuka will do big numbers at Ohio State. For Miami, Cam Ward to Xavier Restrepo will be something you'll hear a lot out there in Coral Gables and as a college football fan, period. Nico Iamaliava, he's special. Squirrel White, also a special player in that system with Josh Heupel. Be big fireworks out there in Knoxville. At number six, Garrett Nussmeyer to Kyron Lacey at LSU. They've waited their turn. At number five, on boom watch, Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. They will lean on them heavily at Colorado. At number four, Noah Fafita and Tetoroak McMillan. High school teammates turned college teammates turned doing probably some pretty wild things for the Big 12 this year. At number three, Dylan Gabriel to Tez Johnson at Oregon. Brady Cook to Luther Burden from Missouri. And the number one duo in college football in 2024 will be Quinn Ewers to secret agent Isaiah Bond. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.